Welcome to the Fallen State. I'm Jesse Lee Peterson. Thank you so much for being with me. Radical Islam is out of control and it's not going away anytime soon. I have with me Imam Suhail Hassan Mullah. He is a well-known Imam in the Los Angeles area. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for having us. How did you become an Imam? I studied formerly overseas at a university it's called Al Azhar University in Cairo, Egypt. Um, it's a, uh, it's the world's actually oldest uh, university that has continuously uh, given um, credentials, diplomas, you know, to, um, to Islamic uh, clergy for the last thousand years. Did you have to be called by God or did you decide that I want to become an imam? We don't have necessarily that concept of being called by God per se or that it was some sort of personal call, but it's an internal feeling of wanting to serve the community in a in a larger, um, in a bigger sort of way. Were you born into a Muslim family? Were you a Christian before this? No, I, I was born into a Muslim family. What does it mean to you to be a Muslim? To be somebody whose life is committed to, uh, to his Lord. Um, somebody who's um, uh, every breath, every step, every motion is done in accordance to how God wants me to live and trying to live uh, seeking God's pleasure. Do you believe in a concept of sin? Yes. And do you sin? Yes. You do sin? Yes. What type of sins do you commit? Uh, I don't like to profess my sins to others. We're supposed to keep those between us and God. Oh, okay. But um, I'm like any other human being. Um, uh, there's a prophetic saying that says um, uh, every son of Adam is a sinner. Uh, but the best of sinners are those that are constant in their repentance. Do you also believe in having more than one wife? It's allowed, yes. Do you, are you married now? I am. And do you have more than one wife? No. Would you have more than one? No. You would not, why not? One is enough, man. One <laughs> is enough to deal with. Yeah. Uh, and my wife is enough to deal <laughs> with in particular. And the ideal in Islam is one, one husband, one wife. Oh, okay. The, the um, injunction that's been made for somebody to be able to have up to four wives is, is for extenuating circumstances that take place in, in various parts of the world at different times in, in, in history. So when you have war-torn countries where all of the men have been wiped out and you have women and you have families that don't have anybody to provide for their, their children and so on and so forth, men who are responsible or upright are supposed to fulfill those roles. And so that as opposed to being women who are out on the street and having to sell themselves and God knows what right. to make a living. So, so there's, you know, there's parameters. It's not just the open, it's not just open season. Do you believe that human beings are in a falling state? Explain what you mean by that. Uh, separated from God. They've fallen away from him and Satan is their father. Mm, no, we don't believe that Satan is our father, no. Do you believe mankind or human beings has fallen away from God? Um, we don't believe in the concept of original, original sin. Oh, you do not? We believe that a human being is a pure soul, is an innocent soul, and he lives in the world and he has his base desires that he has to fight and that his lusts and so forth that he has to, you know, try to constantly push away, but he is internally pure and good and whole. Human beings are all good. Uh, are they good and evil? Of course, there's human beings that are good and evil. I mean, that okay. plays out in everyday life. But I'm talking about their original state in which they're in. So we don't believe in a fallen state per se. We do believe that Adam uh, was thrown out of, out of paradise. So we believe in that concept, but we don't believe that we take on the sin that anybody else, you know, carried before us. Where do you believe your sin come from? Can you explain that? How do you become a sinful person then, if it's not passed on from generation to generation? By falling prey to your own lusts, your own desires. You know, those internal whisperings of go do this, go cheat, go lie. And, and all of the messaging that takes place around us and all of the different promptings that, you know, push people into, into committing evil acts. Are those temptations from Satan? Yes. They are from Satan? Yes. So your religion teaches there is a God and there Correct. is a Satan? Correct. Oh, okay. 
And when one dies, a Muslim die, does he or she go to hell or heaven? Either or, based upon their actions, based upon their, their, their whether or not they truly committed themselves, believed in God. We, in, in Islam, we believe that God is one. And uh, the gravest sin is to associate partners with God, to worship idols, to say that somebody else was God and worship someone else, et cetera, et cetera. Who is God? God is um, the creator, the sustainer, the maintainer of all things. He is the one who has no beginning, the one who has no end. Do uh, Muslims have love? Yes, absolutely. And what is love? The Islamic golden rule is, um, is embodied in the prophetic saying that says, none of you truly believes until he, he or she loves for his brother or sister in humanity what he or she loved for himself. Do you agree with me that love is just simply not hating? Perhaps, I mean, it could, actually no, I wouldn't agree with that. Why love not? is, uh, hate is something that's, is, uh, is, emanates from anger, from, from you know, enmity, aggression. So love is, is its polar opposite. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't simplify it and say that love is just not hate. So if you don't have hate, don't you, only thing that's left is love, right? No, there's a lot of gray area in between, man. Where's, what is the gray area? <laughs> Either you love or you hate. Wh no, what's the gray area? No, I mean, you like, you, you're neutral. You, uh, those are very polar opposites. You know, like there's people in this room, I've never met them before. Um, I don't necessarily love them, I don't know them, but I don't hate any of them. So the, there's, there's more than that. You have to know them to love them? To love them to a level of uh, where you have that, um, that true affinity towards them. Yes, absolutely, you cannot truly love somebody, truly love somebody, unless you know them. But but the starting point in your relationship with them should be a point of love. I noticed that once I was, once God took away my anger, which is hate, mm. I now love all people. Nice. Even those I don't know, even my beautiful. enemy. Beautiful, beautiful. Because nothing is love but love. That's beautiful. That's Do beautiful. you believe that's possible though? That's, I, I believe And I don't even have to know them or anything. That's beautiful. I, I mean, if somebody can, if somebody is at that level, that's, that's fantastic. And that, that is how we as Muslims are supposed to view um, our fellow human beings. Are you the head of your wife? The head of my wife? Yes. No, man, I'm my own person. She's her own person. Who is the head of your wife? The head of my wife? Yes. I never even heard that concept. I don't know what that means. If you're not the head and the love is not being passed down through you, who is her head and where is she getting her love from? It's a mutual relationship of love between the two of us. But where is it coming she, from? From God, from so, God's teachings. So, uh, so God goes around you and give her her love and then he gives you yours? I don't know if it would be said as such, but um, she's somebody who's deeply rooted in her faith in God. And I, and I, you know, I try to be the same. And we try to mutually um, strengthen each other in our service of God. So you don't lead your wife at all? I do, I do. But how you lead her if you're not her, the head of I, her? I'm not familiar with that sort of term, terminology, oh, okay. so I wouldn't frame it as such. I see. But yeah, but I'm ultimately, as the head of the household, I'm responsible for leading my family. Do you identify with a certain type of Islam? Uh, yes. And um, what type do you identify with? Um, I consider myself to be a Sunni Muslim. And what is that? A Sunni Muslim is somebody who's um, committed to the, uh, to the practices, to the teachings, to the um, authority of the finality of the last prophet, the prophet Muhammad. How is that different from another type of Islam? There's two main branches of Islam, Sunni Muslims and Shia, Shia Muslims. The Shia, they put a little bit more, uh, they give a little bit more authority to individuals who passed away after the Prophet Muhammad and oh, they follow some more of their teachings. So do they like one another? Um, typically, yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, what you see in the world today yeah. is, you know, contradictory to, to what we're, you know, to that. Do Muslims, including you, do you love Christians and Jews? Absolutely. Do you see Christians and Jews as infidels? Mm, no, not necessarily. We don't use that word um, in conversation as such or anything like that. 
Um, we don't pass judgment on people just walking down the street uh, either. But if you were to ask me on a theological level, um, what do I think of Christians and Jews? I, I don't have a, a preset uh, notion. But if you were to ask me um, if somebody else believes that somebody else shares in the, in the uh, divinity of God, uh, I would say that that person is putting, uh, um, uh, you know, is ascribing something that only belongs to God to someone else. And therefore, they're not following the, the, the true, um, uh, truly what God is about and what he wants from us. So let me go back to that because I'm not clear on sure, the answer. Sure. Do you and other Muslims see Christians and Jews as infidels? No. So so let so me. So we're not infidels. Be, uh, in, we don't use that terminology. But I'm saying, do you see us? You might not go around just saying it. Yeah. But are we? Nor do seeing, we go. Nor do we go around even thinking that. But are we seeing? Are you taught that we are infidels? Uh, the Quran teaches us the the scripture uh, that is for, we believe to be verbatim the word of God um, that uh, those that ascribe partners to God um, in other words people that say that uh, you have God his son the Holy Ghost Holy Spirit whatever it may be and any uh, variant understanding of that where people are ascribing divinity that only belongs to God to someone else then we believe yes that they are in fact, um, we don't use that word infidels, but that they are not worshiping God in his oneness as he should be worshiped. Do you and other Muslims see Christians and Jews as infidels, even though you don't go around saying it, but you are taught that we are infidels? Yes or no? No. You're not taught that with the Quran or anything? Not explicitly in the way you mentioned it, absolutely not. But it is being taught? No. We're not infidels. Reverend Jesse, these are not yes or no questions. These are I, questions that, that need to be uh, unpacked. And I'm getting the feeling that you're saying that you are taught that. No, we are and I'm infidels. not trying to run away from a question. Right, I understand. So does it I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be uh, um, true to the question right. as somebody in my capacity who knows what I know and not to give a, you know. Of so, course. Yeah. And so... So you're not taught that we're Christians and Jews are infidels. No, no. The Quran. I've never been taught that. Put it, if you're asking me, have I ever been? Taught I mean, does the Quran teach that at all? There are there are verses that talk about people who ascribe divinity to other than God, as being people who are called. Um, the Quranic terminology is kafir. Kafir means somebody who has. Uh, uh, somebody who's an unbeliever. In other words, they have that true belief in their heart, but they've covered it. They've masked it. Oh, they see. know that God is one, but yet they've ascribed partnership uh, and, and, and um, associated others with God. And are those the Christians and Jews? That they can be the Christians and oh, Jews they're referring and other people. to the Christians and Jews? No, no, no. No, no. Actually, and Jews, we don't, um, Jews, as far as my understanding, don't have that, um, uh, um, understanding of who God is or who you is not. You say they don't? They don't. In other words, they believe in one God as purely one God. Do, do Muslims love the Jews? We do. Because they are people who received a divine message and if they followed it as it was given to them, we absolutely, we have love for them. Do you believe in the sh uh, Sharia law? Uh, we believe that God uh, wants us to live a certain uh, a lifestyle and path, and that is embodied in what's called the Sharia, yes. So you support the Sharia law? Uh, you believe in living under that law? I believe that for me in my own life and how I want to, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, carry myself under God's authority, yes, that Sharia, that Sharia law is important to, to me. Do you believe that Muslims should be allowed to come into America and set up the Sharia law and live under that law and not subject to the Constitution? As in their own personal lives, just like anybody else. Or the law of the land. The law of the land, no. The law of the land, no. How about the Sharia law? Should they be allowed to set that up in this country? Um, no. The, the Sharia law, you have to realize, is multifaceted. It's a vast corpus 
body of law. So there are certain aspects of the Sharia law that a Muslim has the right to believe in and practice. For example, I pray five times a day, right? That's what my uh, faith teaches. And that's part of the Sharia. To well, the I'm not needy. talking about that. There's a but, that's what, law. but that's what Sharia law is. How about Sharia law that says that women don't have the same right as men? That's not if, Sharia if law. If a woman should commit adultery, stoner, uh, if a homosexual is a homosexual, throw them off the roof or something, whatever they do, that you're not subject to the law of this land. Yeah. Should that type so, of Sharia law be a, So you're allowed? talking about the criminal, uh, um, criminal law as it, uh, which is one part of the Sharia, should that be instituted in America? Is right. that what you're asking me? Right. No. It should not be allowed in no. America. No. Um, do Muslims hate homosexuals? Do Muslims hate homosexuals? No. Is homosexuality evil? Yes. It is evil. And what should happen to a homosexual? What should happen to a homosexual? Once a Muslim find out that um, another Muslim is a homosexual, what should happen to that person? They should... I mean, it depends. If we don't go up to people on the street and ask them to, you know, right? But once uh, you find out that they are and they are Muslim, if I had a friend that I found out was a homosexual, right. I would engage them in conversation and dialogue, and I would say, "Man, you have a family that raised you as a Muslim." No, we're well, not you personally, but the religion teaches what about homosexuality? That homosexuality is a sin. And what should happen to the homosexual according to the religion? that what should happen to the homosexual, mm -hmm. that they should rectify their lifestyle and, and live it in a way that's uh, in accordance to how God wants them to live. And if they don't, what should happen? If they don't, that's their own private life that I don't, that I don't have, nor does the state have any authority over them. Does the Quran teaches that they should be punished in one form or another? The Quran teaches that the people of Lot were punished for their uh, committing homosexual acts. There is no explicit reference in the Quran that tells us of how we should accordingly treat uh, people who practice homosexuality. And so the Quran, so let me, so let me, so let me, the Quran, uh, uh, Quran teaches that homosexuals should be punished, or yes or no? Uh, no. Why are so many homosexuals being punished and especially in Muslim countries where yeah, that's a very good question, they are being huh? thrown off roof and, and um, that's a very even if another man or woman is raped by a homosexual, that person should be killed as well. Why are they teaching that if number it's one, not I, being taught Number one, I'm not, you know, I don't know if I'm fully in agreement with you in terms of what you're stating as so supposed fact. Uh, number two, um, governments or people or uh, Muslims even that do things uh, doesn't mean that they're doing things according to what Islam teaches. Tell me, what does the Quran say that say should happen to a homosexual man or woman, a lesbian? Or what should happen to them if they don't change? What should happen to them? There's no, there's no mention of that. No punishment, no anything. There's no, no. But if I can point that out to you, would you still deny it or what? I'm not denying anything. I'm, I'm, ask, I'm answering you, I'm answering the question that you're asking. So the Quran doesn't teach what should happen to a homosexual? The Quran does not give, have any explicit, explicit injunction or directive. That what does it have about that lifestyle? I just told you what, what the people of Lot and their... Uh, their evil, uh, sexual, perverse ways. Well, we're not talking about Lot, we're talking about now. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. There's the same rules that apply in Lot's days apply today. In terms of? Homosexuality. Homosexuality is a sin, absolutely. So the same rules apply. When you say the same rules, what do you mean by that? Whatever the punishment were then, uh, is it still the same today? The punishment then was brought by God. It wasn't brought by the hands of man. But is this the same punishment today? Uh, if you're asking me, do we have the authority that God has? Absolutely not. Radical Islam, terrorism, terrorism. How do you feel about that? Radical Islam, terrorism. First of all, um, I feel very, very uncomfortable with the terminology of radical Islam. You wouldn't call it radical Islam, terrorism? No, I, we want to call them, um, we want to call people like, ISIS, for example, a death cult. 
But why not call it what it is? It's not because it it's not what it is. But that's what they go by. That's what they that's live correct. by. That's correct. That's they what they go by. That, but that's not what the world community of Muslims uh, believes in. Nor do we sanction. Nor do we acknowledge as being having anything to do with our faith. But they're doing it based on what they've been taught within that. And they're not doing uh, it based on religion. the teachings of Islam. No, they're not. Where do they get this idea of beheading and killing homosexuals and? Killing the infidels from a very, a very, they, a very perverse, by, a very per, not. It's not a radical Islam. Um, it's a very perverse understanding of Islam. If that's true, why don't we see Muslim men and women in the U.S. protesting out on the front line, Man, people, Muslims making are noise dying. and saying that Muslim, we don't agree with this. this 90 is not what, to 95 why don't we see them protesting? 90 to 95 percent of the people that die at the hands of terrorists are Muslims themselves. I understand that. The, 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 but the, you're not answering my question. No, why don't we see them protesting I am answering, I am answering your question. I'm not answering it in the way you want me to answer it. 250 people died in an explosion the other day in Iraq, a terrorist right. bombing. All of those people were Muslims. You think we stand for that? We the it, the loss of innocent life has anything to do with our faith? Absolutely why don't not. we see that in America? If you don't stand for it, why do you out? We, why that's, is that you're that's not all we out? do, man. But you yes. gotta answer the question. I don't. There's not a massive amount of Muslim men and women rallying and protesting and in the media so they can see that this aspect of Islam is evil and they don't agree with it. Why don't we see that? Because that's something, number one, we, Muslim leadership, day and night, that's all we do, is condemn active violence to the point where it gets sickening, where it gets, we get tired of just condemning what we see happening in the news. Um, there was, a, there was a, um, a very detailed sort of manifesto that was written, it's called Open Letter to Baghdadi. Uh, it's, you, can, you can Google it, lettertobaghdadi.com. It's the preeminent Muslim scholarship throughout the world uh, hundreds of them that have signed on to this manifesto that have theologically refuted. But most no, of us the, don't know about that, though. I'm telling you about it right now. To make us comfortable uh, being around Muslims, why don't we see in a public way Muslims out protesting? Because we, what, what you want us to take to the streets y yes. and say that we stand against this stuff? Yes. Uh, why are you not doing that? Why don't we see that? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense if to I do see, that. If I see there's killing all around, I don't, what do you mean? Just to go out on the street and say, hey, stop the killing? What, I don't get that. Yes, yeah, let mean? America know yeah. that we don't agree with that's this. That's what we do. In, this is not Islam. Yeah, that's this what is we even do. Because it would make regular Americans feel more comfortable around yeah. no, I, Muslims. And I understand. If you are out there in numbers yeah. demonstrating that yeah. you don't agree with this. Yeah. And, and, and I understand what you're saying, so and why I, don't you, I understand why don't the climate. Do why don't we we don't that? do it in that particular fashion, perhaps, in how you're stating it, but we do it in many in our daily conversations that we have But we don't we know about people. those things. I'm asking about the massive, where the massive of people in America can yeah. see it. Yeah. Why not do So this? you want us to organize a million-man march? That would and, help. Uh, yeah, that was, that's but a good idea, But tell me man. why you don't do it. Why we don't do it? Yes. Because nobody's taking the initiative to do it in that particular fashion that you mentioned. Why not? I don't know. You don't know? I don't know. Is it evil to behead people? Uh, yes. It is evil? Yes. Well, why is that taught in the Muslim religion? That's, show me where that's taught, man. Just because Muslims are doing it doesn't mean that Islam teaches it. Then why are they doing it? They say they get it from the Quran. I have no idea. Allah U Akbar encouraged them to do it. Yeah. That is punishment. Yeah. Where are they getting that from? Are they lying about being taught that within the, that religion? Like I said, completely twisted and perverse understandings of the faith. You have to realize that these things are not done in a vacuum. They're done in a socio socio-political climate, in a post-colonial world where people don't have freedoms. They don't have, um, uh, they don't have the freedom to worship. They don't have the freedom to gather. They don't have the, the freedoms that the Western world shares. The U.S. invasion on Iraq, the U.S. invasion on Afghanistan, the hate that you're seeing emanating from that part of the world is hate that was brought upon them by bombs that were dro dropped upon them. And they're, and they're, well, that's not true. And they're the firing hatred, back in this evil sort of way. The so moves, don't, the so don't, don't describe things in a vacuum 
that have a much larger world conte context than that. But you're, you're not trying being to honest. simplify the manner. You're, you're not trying being honest right now. I didn't start with that. I I I I've mean, lived, I've lived uh, for 40 years. Christians have been fighting since way back when. Uh, there's always been. True. Uh, Christians have always been trying to protect themselves from Muslims. If, Christ, if Muslims love freedom, why is it that when they move to places over Europe, you know, in Europe and France and other places, right? The first thing they do is attack the free people. The first, They've had all type of Islamic the first, uh, bombing. The, over, uh, the first thing they do. Why do there's, they attack? Man, there's millions of people, mi millions of Muslims that live in Europe. If that, if it was as you were stating, there wouldn't be no humo no more humanity left. Are there a few crazies and radicals out there who are doing, who are doing absolutely unthinkable things? Yes. Are those people doing it because that's what our feet? Our faith teaches hell no. Can we expect more ter Muslim terrorist attacks in uh, this country? You know what? Uh, I can't. I'm not. I don't know the future. I can't predict the future. Um, I hope not. Who are you supporting in this presidential election? Um, lesser of two evils, Hillary Clinton. You think Hillary Clinton is a lesser evil than Donald Trump? Uh, I don't know, man. You know, uh, Donald Trump said that he's going to stop the Muslims from coming in until you can figure out what is going on. Is, is that a good idea? Hell no. Why not? Because it's ignorance. He's just, he's feeding into um, uh, media fear mongering. But isn't it best the responsibility of our government to protect we the people first? Uh, yes it is. And so we don't, he doesn't know the extent of what's going on because we have a a crooked government right now. What's wrong with Donald Trump wanting to do that, saying that he will do that? He's saying that he's going to stop it altogether. Right. He's going to stop Muslims altogether. Right. That's a that's a categorical racial profiling that America doesn't stand for. America does not stand for um, the the you know the non allowance of black people or Latino people or Muslim people to enter this field or this arena or into the country. There are ISIS members, I believe, who are coming into this country because they're not being vetted and they're coming in to kill us. That's why Donald Trump wants to stop the flow until he can do it in the right way. Vet the people first. Anything wrong with that? Uh, with vetting people? Absolutely not. So with, then with, what's categorically, wrong with, with categorically denying people to come from some place or some religious uh, background to come into country, that's absolutely problematic. And why does Donald want to do that? I don't know, ask him. Because of the uh, Islamic terrorist attacks that are happening. I, I'm not worried about people um, around me and doing heinous acts and so on and so forth. I don't live in that sort of fear. That's, that's fear mongering that the media promotes. No, it's not. That these type of we see problems. the bombing. We just saw it in Orlando, mm -hmm. Florida. Mm -hmm. We saw the beheading of a woman down in Oklahoma. A black Muslim tried to be, he beheaded one woman at the workplace and then he tried to do it to another one. We saw what happened at the military base in Texas. Mm -hmm. Shout in Allah U Akbar. The mm -hmm. media is not promoting this. We see this for mm -hmm. ourselves. True. So you can't blame that on True. the media. True. We see reality but, of what's happening. And Donald Trump has made a promise that he's going to put America first. Anything are you voting for Don Donald Trump? All the way. Oh, yeah? Yeah, 100%. Oh, wow. I don't know if I would have stepped on the show had I known that. Why not? You, <laughs> but you would have discriminated against me and you would have profiled me. You said that's not good. Yeah, you're right. You're right. But why would you profile me? I'm, man, just, you I'm just talking. Oh, okay. Way. So that, there's nothing wrong with profiling there, right? Uh, there's nothing wrong with profiling? Right. Do you like when the LAPD pulls you over just because you drive a fancy car and your skin color is a little too dark for them? I, I don't mind at all. Especially since you don't they mind know that, especially since there are black people, young men, who are committing crimes up the yang yang, and he needs to stop me to find out what's going on. So you, I'm a citizen. I want to be protected. I so don't you, take it personal. You're, you're fine with living in a police state in this ultra-repressive ultra sort of environment well, where I'm, everybody's fearful for, and everybody's looking over their shoulder because they don't, you know, fit the, because they well, look I'm a certain way. Well, I'm not afraid of the police. I'm afraid mm. of the blacks who would kill me. Okay. I really appreciate you coming on. Did you have fun? It was interesting. But not fun. Ah. I don't know if it was fun. <laughs> well, I appreciate you coming. You were interesting. And thank you so much, folks, for tuning in. <laughs>